Fannie Willis does not want Trump's appeal to move forward. Now she's pleading and begging with the Court of Appeals to not accept it. Remember, the way this works in Georgia is from the lower court, the defense needed to get permission from Judge McAfee to appeal this to the higher level. He has granted them that, but now it's up to the Court of Appeals in Georgia to accept the appeal. And of course, this is about Big Fannie Willis's disqualification. And she does not want this disqualification to even be accepted. So we're not in the Court of Appeals yet. We're still knocking on the door trying to see if the court will let us in. And so Fannie submitted this, and some people are wondering why she submitted it, saying, well, you know, if this disqualification situation is so settled and so clear, then what's your concern? Like, just don't even respond to this, and the Court of Appeals should reject it, right, Fannie? So let's go into her brief. Big Fannie Willis sends this one in to the Court of Appeals, state of Georgia, not wanting Trump's appeal to be accepted. She says, this is the brief of the Honorable Fannie Willis, Office of the DA. And here's what she's telling the Court of Appeals as she attempts to keep this review out. Fannie says, all right, Court of Appeals, says Donald Trump and the co-defendants, they seek interlocutory review of the Superior Court on their motion to dismiss this case. And of course, remember in a criminal case, normally we wait, if this is the beginning and this is the end, normally we wait till the end after the conviction to take it up on appeal. But Trump is saying, ah, we're going to stop this case right here. We want to appeal this right now because if Fannie Willis is on this case, it's going to jeopardize not only this portion of the case, Trump has already been indicted from a corrupt prosecutor, but it will also continue to taint the rest of the case with a noxious odor from Fannie Willis. And so Willis is saying the trial court called McAfee had an evidentiary hearing, lasted several days. Fannie, the Kool-Aid gal, came in. Ultimately, the trial court found the evidence insufficient, saying there was no actual conflict and declined to dismiss the indictment. Now, McAfee also permitted the prosecution to proceed under the direction of Fulton County DA's office after Nathan Wade went away. She said only, but if one of you leaves, it's not that bad. So there being no error by the trial court, this presentation is only Donald Trump being dissatisfied with the trial court's proper application. And because the applicants have wholly failed to carry their burden, the Court of Appeals should decline this mid-pretrial appeal. Fannie says the court will grant leave to appeal the order where these indicia have been met. So so we can hear the appeal when the issue is dispositive, meaning what if it's settled, it will settle the case. Like if this one issue about Fannie's disqualification, if she is disqualified, will it be dispositive? Will it result in the case being dismissed? The order appears erroneous and will cause a substantial error at trial. And three, we want precedent to be established. So with those factors, Fannie's going to give us some analysis. She says the trial court found that Donald Trump, right? She's quoting McAfee here, saying McAfee said that Trump has failed to demonstrate that Fannie conduct has impacted or influenced the case to Trump's detriment, which is a total cop-out. Okay, we had a level five gasket blown here when we read that because the entire case was born out of a corrupt Nathan Wade birth. Their little love child is this Rico case. And that little love child is, you know, not long for this world because it was birthed out of a corrupt precedent, right? And that makes the entire thing invalid. It's fruit of the poisonous tree, to use a better analogy. The fact that Trump has been prosecuted means that he has been essentially victimized by the process and it was not created from a just beginning. Now, Fannie continues saying, despite this, Trump first insists that the trial court must have erred and that the error is a structural one that affects Trump's due process rights. And so Fannie says, as we're going to show, there was a factual basis for McAfee's ruling and error is just no more here. It's just disagreement from Trump. Dissatisfaction is not a basis for granting an appeal or a reversal. And so you should not accept this. So here is what Fannie says in response to Trump. Trump. And if you missed the Trump brief, we read that here previously in a prior video, but saying here, citing public comments made by DA, Trump contends that Fannie engaged in forensic misconduct. That was her church speech. Why God? Well, it's because you were sleeping with him. That's why. Given the trial court's factual findings, which are supported by the record, the trial court correctly ruled that they did not engage in disqualifying forensic misconduct. Going to rehash a lot of the same arguments we've already seen. There are two generally recognized grounds for disqualification. One is conflict of interest and the other is forensic misconduct. Now, while not expounding on other forms of misconduct, it needs to be of such egregious nature as to require disqualification. And this court has recognized this, that the touchstone of due process is fairness of the trial, okay? Not culpability of the prosecutor, which actually supports her disqualification. The idea is that Fannie Willis, we don't care if she actually was corrupt. She was clearly, but we're not gonna measure the degree of that corruption. The appearance of 
of it alone is enough because we don't want to get into their culpability. But if the even appearance of it without getting into how often they indicted each other at the Fannie condo, we want to make sure the trial is considered to be legitimate. So that's what we look at. Now that would support her disqualification. So she says, mindful of these goalposts, McAfee made extensive factual findings about Fannie's public comments. And he said her comments were not sufficiently egregious to require disqualification. He also said the comments did not deny Trump an opportunity for a fundamentally fair trial, even though she tainted the jury pool with her disgusting noxious odor. She says first here, your honor, court of appeals, why you should reject this. The trial court found that Fannie's comments concerned either the office's conviction rates, the charges in the indictment, the procedural posture of the case, the need for the importance of the investigation or personal anecdote. No, clearly she wasn't talking about the defendants, even though we know she was. Insofar as Fannie delivered a speech at a local church, the trial court concluded the speech, quote, did not cross the line because it failed to name any defendant, right? She didn't say Trump is a racist, but she did speak right after Ashley Merchant filed the Michael Roman motion. And so it was, she was prompted clearly by that. Now it did not disclose sensitive or confidential evidence. It did not address the merits of the indicted offenses to move the trial in the court of public opinion. Yes, it did. She called them racists and bigots and said that they were oppositional to God's will, like they were demonic. And further, the case is too far removed from jury selection for any actual prejudice. And so time will go by that it won't be so bad. So these findings are all amply supported by the record and not clearly erroneous. And further, the applicants, Trump, they don't challenge the court's factual findings. And so they're sustained. Now, the trial court also noted that Fannie's comments that individuals were, quote, playing the race card and that her references came to three races of different prosecutors. Remember, she said, why are they targeting the black man? And he said, well, it's not because he's black. It's because you slept with him and he's your special prosecutor that you went hand selected. Although the trial court found that the effect was to cast racial aspersions at the decision to file the motion that disqualified, it's no surprise the court still found no basis to disqualify Fannie. Factual passing references of the various races of members, that's not what that was. Factual passing references. It wasn't like she was just like, oh yeah, you know, Nathan Wade, you know, you remember him, the black guy? No, she was singling out race, making it the whole point of her lecture. Hardly the type of egregious commentary that warrants disqualification. And a comment suggesting that individuals were playing the race card is too vague. And so that doesn't support disqualification either. They say we had days of evidence here and testimony. It failed to disclose anything like a calculated pretrial plan. They haven't identified any public statements, no showing of Fannie to wield any improper influence over this other than the entire speech where she's corralling the minds, right? That speech got passed out all around Fulton County. It was replayed in the media over and over and over again. Now, while the trial court noted that the precedent is sparse, it did look to Williams for guidance, saying, if I only have Williams to rely on, then I can't disqualify her. This case is no different. And so Williams is controlling and you don't need court of appeals, right? You don't need to review any of this. Williams is great. Williams was the right conclusion. They say next Donald Trump claims that Fannie exhibited forensic misconduct. Why? She lied in her affidavit. Now, as the applicant acknowledges, the trial court made no findings that could support that claim, but we know better. Remember Nathan Wade's affidavit said the relationship started early 2022. Now, Robin Yurdy said it started 2019 during a judicial conference. That was also supported by Terrence Bradley in his text messages to Ashley Merchant before he suddenly got cold feet and backed out. Now, this court should therefore summarily reject this argument, says Fannie. He did not make any findings about this because he did not want to call Fannie a liar. He couldn't. Now, as the fact finder on the motion to disqualify, the trial court is the final arbiter. And so naturally, the court cannot make factual findings anew. And so you should consider, right, McAfee. He considered Fannie Willis's testimony. He considered Nathan Wade's testimony, but he said that there was no lie. And so if you find it differently, then you're invading and changing the facts that were found at the lower court. And you can't do that, which is why that should be rejected. Now, if you apply any evidence standard to the record, McAfee did not abuse its discretion in denying their motion to disqualify. The question is whether Fannie has a disqualifying personal interest in the prosecution. Now, after the hearing, there was an intense examination. They detailed Fannie and Wade's expenditures, examined how they hired, noted the terms of the contract, the salary, all the financial gain, and ultimately McAfee, like a weenie, again, determined that Fannie was not greatly or pecuniarily interested in the prosecution because she wasn't going to get like a bonus if Trump got convicted. But remember, if Nathan Wade said, hey, baby, hey, mama, you got to dismiss this case because there's no case here, his contract's over. He gets no more money. She's his lover.
whatever. So he can't pay for her to go on cruises, nor will he have the time when he's actually working somewhere else. So she had an absolute monetary interest in this prosecution. So the DA was not financially motivated. Yes, she was. And the record affirmatively disproved the allegation that she sought to prolong the case, given the attempts to prevent delays in the prosecution. Because she waited until August of 23. This is such a ridiculous thing. And McAfee knows better than this, okay? It was one of the more pathetic parts of his opinion, where he said, Fanny is racing to get to trial. And we say, yeah, because she waited until 2023 to file. She has to get it done before the election. She delayed, she created pre-indictment delay, hired her lover, paid him for two years before she even indicted him, then indicted him, and then raced. So McAfee started the timeline inappropriately. Now, these sound findings by Fanny lacked any personal stake, and so they negate the conflict. And lastly, McAfee correctly determined that no appearance of impropriety, the appearance alone, warranted her disqualification, and they remedied it by just getting rid of one of the bank robbers. Saying, turning to this issue, McAfee determined that there was no showing of a violation in any way of their due process rights. And he went a step further. We could not determine based on evidence when their relationship became romantic, which is such a joke. Even assuming for the sake of argument that Wade's continued involvement in the prosecution would have produced an appearance of impropriety, the trial court allowed for his withdrawal. The court has sanctioned the same remedy for appearance. And so this case is no different. Setting aside whether Wade's removal from the case was in fact necessary, he withdrew from representation hours after the trial court issued its order and Fanny accepted it. And so which done. Like we did what they asked us to do. We're done. He's gone. You can't reverse that. We're not bringing him back. And so accordingly, they properly exercised their inherent authority in McAfee's courtroom. There is no impropriety and there's no basis for an interlocutory mid-process appeal. And so the applicants having failed to carry their burden as to their request, the state of Georgia says that you should reject Donald Trump's appeal and the other co-defendants appeal signed by the newest addition to the team, F. McDonald Wakeford, who is just so we know, I believe a white guy. That's how Fanny keeps track of these people. So we'll work with her naming conventions here. So I think she brought him out. I don't know if she's sleeping with him yet or not or what's going on. But John, Will Wooten, and Alex Burnick are also on this case. What's interesting is we don't see Anna Cross anymore. Where did Anna Cross go? Huh? Gone. Signed by F. Scott McDonald, sent over to all the co-defendants. So we'll see what the Georgia Court of Appeals does. Right now it's on their docket. We're waiting for them to issue a ruling. And then we'll see where this goes. And we'll expect full appellate briefs if they do accept it from the Trump defense and from Fannie's useless government. And so my friends will be here continuing to cover the Fannie saga and the rest of the Trump prosecutions and 2024 election litigation. And I hope you join us as we do. Thank you for subscribing and for liking this video and for inviting a friend or family member to come over here and join us. Send them a link, send them a short video so they can see what's cooking behind the scene in all of these trials. We got great links in the description below. RobertGovea.com if you want to check out the PDFs. Our members only community at watchingthewatchers.locals.com, which is where we do live streams in the morning only for our members. We do shows on Saturday and we have a great community there. We'd love to have you join us. So come check us out, watchingthewatchers.locals.com. We'll see you over there and back here on the next one.